from KSAT 12. The news at noon starts right now. Hurricane Ian already leaving destruction in its wake in the Cayman Islands. That hurricane now intensifying overnight, bearing down now on western Cuba with category three strength. Now the storm has its sights set on Florida. FEMA loading 360 trailers with more than 2 million meals as 5,000 Florida National Guardsmen are being activated. Meanwhile, many people are rushing to get out. Have uh, about 2.5 million Floridians that are currently uh, under uh, some type of an evacuation order. When you have five to 10 feet of storm surge, uh, that is not something that, that you want to be a, a part of. Izzy Castro from our sister station WKMG spoke to some of the people who are evacuating. We saw a couple of families pulling in here to the Rosen Center on I Drive, many of them evacuating from their homes in the Tampa area. 40 years I've never left and this is the first time we're leaving. This family checking in with their dog at the Rosen Center Hotel. They told us off camera they left their home after a mandatory evacuation in the St. Petersburg area. Emergency officials warning residents the storm surge could get as high as 15 feet. This could be the storm that we've hoped would never come to our shores. This is what I-4 looked like last night. Over half a million people were ordered to evacuate from the Gulf Coast, many of them evacuating here to Central Florida. David Engel told us the drive from his home near the bay to Orlando wasn't as bad as he thought it would be. Actually, we had a pretty good trip over. We left at 5 this morning, it took about two and a half hours. It wasn't okay. bad until it got over about US 27. That was pretty yeah. bumper to bumper. But otherwise than that, it was what they were saying the time frames could be was not really any problem. We are thinking about those folks who've been affected and those who are about to get slammed with that hurricane. In the meantime, here, nothing. No, it's it, there's something. It was gorgeous right. this okay, morning. Well. I'm and super cool. Rain, but, you know. No yeah. rain. You're right, That's David. True. And you're right, Ursula. Both of you guys are right. In uh, fact, the reason why we're dry is because we had a cool front move through. That cool front is helping to steer Hurricane Ian uh, off to the east there. Right now outside, though, nothing but blue skies. It's already 84 degrees. Consider the fact that we started off in the low 60s. So we've been able to see temperatures increase by some 20 plus degrees just in a few hours here. Very dry outside. Dew points are in the 30s. That's chapstick weather, my friends. It's so dry, you're going to need a little extra chapstick out there. And winds are pretty stout from the northeast at about 15 miles per hour. David just showed me his chapstick there off in the distance, so he's paying attention. Hey, if you're planning on picking up the kiddos today, this afternoon it is going to be warm, 91 degrees. But with low humidity, it should feel OK out there. We'll continue to have east northeast winds at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. We're not done with the comfortable mornings. In fact, that's going to be a real weather winner over the next few days, especially for early risers. I'll have those details for you and a neighborhood view of how cool it'll be coming up. David. Look forward to that. Thank you, Sarah. New at noon after more than a year, the search for a missing man comes to a tragic end. Police in shirts are now saying human remains that were found in Comal County have been identified as that missing man. Jacob Dubois disappeared 18 months ago. The Comal County Sheriff's Office notified shirts police about the discovery, but it's not clear where the remains were found. The last time this 22 year old was seen alive was back in March of 2021. He told his girlfriend he was going to meet up with a friend, Ethan Beckman, but he never came back. Beckman was jailed on a charge of tampering with or fabricating physical evidence. Police say that investigation into murder charges is still ongoing. The trial for a man charged with murder, accused of shooting and killing his stepfather starts today. Jaron Diego Garcia, 19 years old when police say he committed that crime. The deadly shooting happened in March of last year, and according to police, Garcia's stepfather was arguing with his wife when the wife's son, then 19-year-old Garcia, intervened. Police say Garcia told them the man was threatening his mom just before they got into a fight. Garcia told police he threw a speaker at the man, striking you in the head. Police say he then went to a bedroom, loaded a gun before shooting him multiple times in the chest. Garcia is now facing murder charges. And two separate fires overnight had some people holding their breath. Both of them broke out in backyard buildings and burned dangerously close to their homes. As Katrina Weber tells us, no one was hurt, but the fire did cause some destruction. Sparking power lines and 
fiery flames battle each other for the upper hand on a storage building behind a south side home. San Antonio fire crews were called there to tame both. They arrived in the 2800 block of Mission Road after 1.30 this morning and found the building burning close to other structures, including a home where people live. Firefighters say it appears the electrical lines may be what caused the fire. Still, they got it all under control without any other damage. No sooner had firefighters finished putting out the fire here than crews across town got called to a similar situation. They had another fire burning in backyard buildings, uncomfortably close to homes. Boom, the flames were huge, huge. This is just the last of it. Flames burning in an alley near the 200 block of West Mistletoe had Steve Bridges grabbing his camera and shooting this video. I didn't get out here earlier when it was in full bloom. He and some of his neighbors also held their breath as firefighters fought to keep the fire from spreading. Eventually, they were able to soak the flames. Then they made sure the fire stayed out. It destroyed two buildings where it started. Both also used as storage sheds. But in this case, investigators had no easy answers for how the fire started. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Happening tonight, there is a conversation about public safety concerns in District 3. Councilwoman Phyllis Villagran will, will host that uh, with District Attorney Joe Gonzalez. And they're going to be discussing the issue and the role of the District Attorney who had, and his play in the justice system. It all starts tonight at 6 o'clock on the Southside Lions Senior Center on Pecan Valley Drive. The discussion ends at 8. The deadline's coming up this week is your last chance to take part in our KSAC community food donations at any participating Randolph Brooks Federal Credit Union location. This is a map of all those participating locations. You can also find a list of these locations on KSAT.com. Donations being accepted through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And if you grab your phone and scan the QR code on the screen, it's going to take you to our web article with a list of the 12 most wanted food items this month. It's simple stuff like peanut butter, cereal, rice, and canned soups. The food drive again ends on Friday. The pandemic did take a toll on the mental health of many in the food and beverage industry. A local nonprofit, though, has been dedicated to making sure that people in this industry have access to affordable mental health services as well as support groups. Tiffany Huerta shows us how these services could soon be expanded to other workers outside of Texas. For a lot of people that work in food and beverage, they don't have health insurance. Joel Rivas has made it his mission to connect those people to affordable therapists and free support groups. He says the pandemic impacted the mental health of workers in this industry in different ways. So imagine being in a day-to-day a -day job where, uh, from, for the most part, you work paycheck to paycheck. Also, just working in an environment that's, that's for the most part, very social, um, and that's uh, the emotional payoff of somebody, that coming to a screeching halt. Rivas is the founder of the Saint City Culinary Foundation that launched in 2017. Through their wellness program called HERD, they offer different services. And we also have um, therapy access working with a, a counseling group in Austin, Texas called Capillary Counseling, uh, that we partner with them in getting, uh, getting people that work in the food and beverage industry, uh, again, accessible, uh, and practical resources that they can afford. They also offer an affordable telehealth program and different educational health classes. During the pandemic, the nonprofit also hosted a COVID-19 pop-up vaccine clinic for service industry workers. Joelle says more than 400 people are using these services, not only in San Antonio, but across Texas, and he is planning to expand to other states. The next place that, that, that we are looking to expand is going to be New Orleans, uh, working with another nonprofit out there, partnering with them uh, to uh, really focus on mental health access uh, for people of color. Rivas was recently recognized for his mental health wellness program from a top food and entertainment magazine. He wants people in the service industry to know that they are not alone. We want people to get balanced in their life and that looks different for everybody. Uh, but addressing mental health and wellness concerns is, uh, is a great first step in that direction. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Still coming up in this half hour, the Cowboys backup quarterback Cooper Rush played a near flawless game to get a huge road win last night. Highlights and reaction coming up in a few minutes.
It is a very unique art installation at the San Antonio International Airport and it's greeting travelers. It features donated bras and ties. The goal to commemorate Breast Cancer Awareness Month. The president and CEO of Methodist Healthcare Ministries says the idea was to create something unusual to get people talking since breast cancer screenings went down 87% during the pandemic. So students from CC were commissioned to create the installation out of donated bras and ties. They collected those during Breast Cancer Awareness Month last year. The sculpture is supposed to represent lymph nodes. We're thinking that if people can make that correlation a little bit uh, from the sculpture to lymph nodes, especially with it being made out of bras and ties, uh, hopefully it'll get a lot of conversation, get a lot more people getting their screenings in and save lives in the end. Well, that looks like a good conversation piece. The project features 250 bras and ties. Looking outside with live cam, it is only 84 degrees. Am I, are my eyes deceiving me here? No, they are not. And what's even more impressive is that we started off near 60 in San Antonio. So we're already up some 25 degrees because of dry air in place. Speaking of dry, the aquifer is down about a foot over the past 24 hours. And when we look at the pollen count, there are a couple of things to sneeze at. Molds are high. Ragweed is moderate and pigweed and grass are low, but molds and ragweed causing some issues out there. All right, take a look at this morning's lows around San Antonio and South Central Texas. We were able to see 61 degrees in San Antonio and even got down into the 40s in parts of the hill country. Now, we're warm. We're in the 80s and this trend of cool mornings and warm afternoons is going to continue for the foreseeable future. But tomorrow morning, a couple of degrees cooler. I'll have a look at those morning lows coming up in just a bit. Got home yesterday, did some afternoon chores, and you could definitely feel the oh, yeah. difference. It was hot, but it was a nice hot. <laughs> it was a dry hot. <laughs> a but, dry heat, a and, nice heat. And yeah. this is the part where, where he laughs at me, Sarah. I got up so early this morning that I had to put on a jacket. Hey, oh. I don't blame you, Ursula. Once the temperature drops oh. below 60 for me, I need a... I need a light sweater yes. uh, or a hoodie. And you know what, this morning it was nice and cool around Beautiful. San Antonio. Look at these morning lows. I even got to put up the fall graphics there in the background with the falling leaves. It got down to 61 in San Antonio, even in the 40s and parts of the hill country. By the way, here's your fun fact for the day. This is the coolest we've been since May 26, 144 days. So yes, it definitely is a welcome change for us. And over the coming mornings, we're going to continue to see pretty pleasant weather. In fact, I think we will dip down into the 50s for Wednesday morning, Thursday morning and Friday morning in San Antonio officially at the airport before we see mornings lows come up a little bit in the weekend, but still much cooler than seasonably average or average low this time of year is 67. But you take a look outside right now. It is warm. It's 84 and we do have a couple of wispy cirrus clouds out there every now and then. Generally though, 84 degrees with a dew point of 38 feels pretty great, especially in the shade. And we've got a breeze northeast wind at about 15 miles per hour. And throughout the rest of the afternoon, we are going to see temperatures warm into the low 90s. Let's take a look at temperatures locally. It's 77 in Rock Springs, 83 in Uvalde, 82 in Creases Springs, 88 in Catula, and 86 in New Braunfels. Again, mostly clear skies out there this afternoon. Dew point change. When we look at just the last 24 hours, we've seen dew points go down some 15 to 25 degrees. That is a big drop in the humidity. You can feel it, and we're going to continue to see low humidity for the next several days. In your case, that 12 hour forecast will be topping off near 91 this afternoon, and winds will be from the the east northeast at about 15 miles per hour. An occasional gust up to 20 is possible. After the sun sets close to 730, we'll see temperatures fall. It's going to be a really pleasant evening. Temperatures will be in the low 70s, even into the 60s by about midnight. Uh, and, but again, this afternoon is going to be pretty toasty. Our average high temperature is 88 degrees, so low 90s, a little bit warmer than seasonably average. But in the hill country, we'll probably be able to, to stay in the 80s. All right, why are we so dry? We had a cool 
cool front moved through yesterday. In its wake, we've got a ridge of high pressure that's really settled over a good portion of the United States. In fact, you can see just how quiet it is around this high. We're really not seeing much as far as rainfall goes. Dry air is filtering in from the north. Most of the nation is quiet with the exception of Florida and Florida is going to unfortunately be battered by Hurricane Ian, a category three hurricane with wind gusts of up to 140 miles per hour right around that eye wall there. As it's emerging into the Gulf of Mexico, it's going to strengthen even more. Potentially, we're going to see it become a category four hurricane as early as later tonight, and it will make landfall somewhere near the Tampa area between Tampa and Fort Myers by Wednesday night as a category three hurricane. It'll fall apart a bit as it moves across land, but still Florida, the Tampa area looking at some major impacts from Hurricane Ian, potentially some storm surge of nine to 15 feet in the Tampa Bay area. Hurricane warnings for Tampa all the way down to Fort Myers and then even inland. We've got uh, tropical storm warnings for areas like Orlando and Jacksonville uh, from Ian. So while Florida deals with some very uh, damaging weather. We're going to be getting very nice weather here in San Antonio. Mornings will be in the 50s. Again, really pleasant for early risers. Have that cup of coffee out on the porch before you get your day started. And then during the days, it'll get warmer. High temperatures near 90. One thing you don't see there is rain coming up in the next half hour. We're going to talk about how exceptionally dry it has been so far this year in San Antonio. David Ursula. So true. Thank you so much, Sarah. It is the way Monday nights should be. Cowboys, Giants, and a Dallas upset victory on the road. Highlights coming up. And Spurs head coach with a warning if you are looking for a sixth championship this season. Pro football coverage. Powered by Davis Law Firm. One thing about Cowboys backup Cooper Rush, he was able to take the time to make all the right plays last night. In the second half, he did against the undefeated New York Giants go to the third quarter game. Tied 6-0, handoff running back Saquon Barkley. Weaves his way through, breaking some tackles. 36-yard touchdown, the first of the game. Giants up 13-6. Cowboys answer right back. Ezekiel Elliott with a handoff, busts his way across the line. One-yard touchdown. Ended in a nine-play, 75-yard drive. Tied it at 13. Next possession for Dallas. Fourth and four at the New York 41. Cooper Rush, C.D. Lamb, right on the marker for a huge first down. Watch the replay. He just barely makes it across the marker. A few plays later, throws it to the corner of the end zone. And Lamb with the one-hander, left-handed touchdown grab. Here it is again, using the left hand, both feet inbounds. Cowboys retake the lead, 2013. They're up 23-16, under two to play. Daniel Jones intercepted by Trayvon Diggs. That's his first pick of the season, and that seals it for the Cowboys, 23-16. They are now 3-0 with Rush as the starting quarterback. He's C.D. Lamb. The guy's open a lot, makes big-time catches. That fade catch was unbelievable. Kellen had some great play-action calls today. We got some shots down the field, and the uh, guys made plays. Remember, Rush is 2-0 this year. He got a game last year. All right, the San Antonio Spurs opened their 2022 training camp yesterday. You will need a program this year. So many new faces, including six rookies on the preseason roster. With the offseason trade of DeJounte Murray to the Atlanta Hawks, the Spurs have gone into full rebuild mode with five-time NBA champion coach Greg Popovich in charge of developing all this new talent. It was picture day at the practice facility yesterday, plus player intros and, of course, interviews. And you know it's an inexperienced team when there are players younger then 19-year-old Josh Primo. So Pop had a pretty sobering reality check on what lies ahead with all these young guys. I probably shouldn't say this, but I'll say it anyway. What the hell? Nobody here should go to Vegas with the thought of betting on us to win the championship. <laughs> and I know somebody will say, gosh, what a Debbie Downer. There's a chance. What if they work really hard? It's probably not going to happen, but the point is to develop this group and give them the best possible opportunity uh, to have long NBA careers and enjoy the hell out of it. And whoever comes after me uh, will have an opportunity to take them to the next level. 
Did you catch the reference to life after Pop with the Spurs from Pop himself? One of those young guns who will get a lot of playing time early on is Jeremy Sohan, the Spurs' first draft pick at number nine overall. He'll wear number 10, and just like Dennis Rodman, loves to dye his hair. And his new look is the Spurs' fiesta colors, getting ready for the team's 50th anniversary celebration at the Alamo Dome in January. So how did he come up with the idea? I did it maybe like a week ago now. And um, I just, you know, on Instagram, everyone was telling me to do it. So I was like, why not? Let's do it. Hey, the big game and our big game coverage has the number five Johnson Jaguars hosting the number six Brandeis Broncos in a showdown this Friday night at Comalander Stadium. The Jaguars' only loss of the season was their opener. Remember the KSAT Pigskin Classic 2022? They lost to Justin in overtime, 46-43. Now, since that time, they have won three games in a row against O'Connor, Churchill, and Roosevelt. For the Broncos, they come into this one 4-1 and 3-0 one and and oh in district with their only loss of the season, number two ranked Brennan in the second week of the season. A really big team, a uh, skilled team, too. Um, they're going to give us a good, a good matchup, but, you know, obviously I think we'll come out victorious. I think it's a, a very important game for us. Uh, you know, this uh, this will totally boost our status if we uh, if we come away with the win, uh, with the win and uh, it'll show the whole district that we mean business. Big time district game kickoff Friday night, Comalander Stadium, seven o'clock. Are you sneezing and wheezing? Yeah, you're not alone. Every year in the U.S., as many as 60 million people suffer from seasonal allergies. Dealing with these allergies, though, may start with your pet. We'll tell you how. You can call it the shopping wars today on the News at Five. We are taking a look at the pros and cons of Walmart Plus and Amazon Prime. You can decide which membership might be better for you. It's today at five after Entertainment Tonight. Many Americans are worried about staying afloat financially, and according to a survey from Bank of America, 71 percent of U.S. workers say that their salaries and wages cannot keep pace with the rising cost of living. That is up from 58 percent who said the same thing in February. The findings are from data taken in July based on Americans who have 401k plans. 44 percent of U.S. employees say they felt well off financially, which is the lowest that level has been in five years. The White House planning to ask Congress to increase access to healthy, free lunches for nine million more school children by 2032. The Biden administration says it wants to fight diet related diseases nationwide. They also want to end the country's hunger crisis by the end of the decade. Officials say the government has a roadmap with proposals that will address these issues. Tomorrow, the White House is going to host its first conference on hunger, nutrition, and health since 1969. The price of butter is going up. The Wall Street Journal reports butter prices were up almost 25% year over year in August. That's almost twice as much as the overall increase in U.S. grocery prices over the same period. Butter supply shortages are reportedly to blame. According to Food and Wine magazine, America's stores of butter are at their lowest level since 2017. The butter shortage caused by factors including labor shortages and a decline in milk production couldn't come at a worse time. With the holidays approaching, we're right on the cusp of peak baking season, which means increased demand could make the butter bust even worse. And you may notice a change in pumpkin prices. The fall staple is getting more expensive. ABC's Will Reeves takes a look at how inflation and drought conditions are contributing to the price hike. It's just a bunch of hocus pocus. Move over, Hocus Pocus. There's a new fall fright. I suggest we form a calming circle. I am cow! The price of this year's pumpkins squashing last year's. As the holiday gets hit by the scariest villain around, inflation. Oh, great pumpkin, where are you? In 2021, the price of a large pumpkin set Halloween lovers back around five bucks. But this year, the cost of that jack-o'-lantern jacked up to 568. It comes as farm owners face rising costs all across the country, from Texas 
to Maryland. The price of fuel has affected everything. The fertilizer for his pumpkins has been, you know, unbelievable. It seems that everything has gone up and of course parents see that in the grocery store. So it's affected us as well. But it's not just inflation causing a scare. Drought conditions also spooking some crops. We didn't have much rain in August. So with the hot weather where it gets above 90 degrees, we didn't get the pollination that we should have got. So we're looking at probably a half a crop of pumpkins. A summer of dry weather forcing farmers like Salisbury's Galen Adkins to get creative. I've already bought a few pumpkins from Upper Delaware. I'll probably get some out of Pennsylvania. I really need to finish picking my field and see just what I got but I know I probably will not have enough. At Happy Day Farm in New Jersey, owner Tim Stockel says families will still be able to get those gorgeous crops. They just might look a little different. The pumpkins this year are a little bit smaller due to the lack of rain, but they are healthy and we do have an abundance amount to pick from. And with Americans set to spend a record $10.6 billion celebrating the holiday this year, and nearly $3.5 billion of that on decorations, experts say there are ways to cut down on costs without compromising on your favorite fall staple. The consumers might want to consider purchasing from local farms this year because transportation costs will have less of an impact on the actual pumpkin prices. Now we were just having a discussion about with the drought what do our pumpkin patches look like right now it'll be interesting to the to prices are going to be higher for sure yeah here. definitely uh you know it is gorgeous outside oh uh, you had nice. to steal that like, didn't like you like what he said there i mean nice. i can't resist a good pun uh we look outside right now and you can see again beautiful skies blue skies and low humidity it is warm it's 84 at the airport 87 at Cincinnati, 85 at kelly and 85 JBSC Randolph near Converse and a bit breezy too. We've generally got winds from the northeast or from the east northeast at about uh, 10 to 15 miles per hour. So a little bit of a breeze, but you can really feel the low humidity. In fact, dew points this afternoon are in the 30s. That's way at the bottom of our scale here. Very dry uh, chapstick weather, as we've been saying. And you know that dry air is going to continue to bring us some cool mornings and some warm afternoons. If you liked this morning's lows, you're really going to like tomorrow's as well. So I'll show you a neighborhood view of tomorrow morning's low temperatures, forecast low temperatures. But unfortunately, we are in the middle of a dry spell. In fact, record dry uh, so far this year. I'll have more details on that. And of course, we'll take a look at Hurricane Ian, which has its sights set for the West Florida coast. Details on all this and more coming up soon. Ursula. Thank you, Sarah. Thousands of Russians are having to leave their country all in an effort to avoid being drafted into the military as ordered by Russian President Vladimir Putin. Meanwhile, as ABC's Elizabeth Schultze reports, the Kremlin now laying groundwork to justify taking over Ukrainian lands. As resentment builds toward Russian President Vladimir Putin, tens of thousands are fleeing Russia, avoiding a new military draft for the war in Ukraine. Video posted online by an independent Russian news outlet shows rows of cars snaking along Russia's border with neighboring Georgia. The line's so long they can be seen from space. This man left his home in St. Petersburg for Finland. No, I, 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 the Putin, I, I, saying, I don't want to fight for Putin. I don't want to die young. The exodus comes after Putin called up 300,000 military reservists to fight in Ukraine, one of several signs he's growing more desperate as his invasion of the country falters. Putin is now setting the stage to annex Ukrainian territory as sham elections wrap up today. The U.S. and its allies say the staged referendum votes calling to make these regions part of Russia are the Kremlin's way to justify taking over Ukrainian land. We stand with our partners around the world in rejecting whatever fabricated outcomes Russia announces. Seven months after the war began, officials fear an annexation could be the latest excuse for Putin to escalate his attacks on Ukraine. In the hard-hit eastern part of the country, this woman displays Ukrainians' resilience. <laughs> saying, you have to live on your own land. This is your land and you must live here. European authorities are investigating leaks on the Nord Stream 1 and 2 pipelines, which transport natural gas from Russia to Germany. Both of the pipelines had been inactive, but officials are not ruling out that the leak could have been caused by Russian sabotage. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington.
The Senate preparing to vote on a government funding plan that's currently on thin ice due to a deal made by Senator Joe Manchin. Tonight's vote will determine if lawmakers will start talks on a measure that will extend funding, which is scheduled to expire Friday at midnight. However, the short-term funding bill includes a reform proposal from Manchin that will speed up the process for energy projects, including a pipeline that will go right through Manchin's home state of West Virginia. Some Republicans say they may vote against the proposal because Manchin backed the Inflation Reduction Act. But lawmakers are likely to vote in favor of the short-term funding extension by the end of the week. This is that time of the year, ragweed and molds. They typically are out in full force and it can wreak havoc on your health. How to recognize when you're suffering from fall allergies in three ways to settle your symptoms down. Oh, and as the weather cools down, more people probably want to spend some time outdoors, but it's very important to keep an eye out for ticks. Ways to remove them and how to make sure you stay safe coming up after the break. The Grito de Independencia, or Grito de Dolores, is known as the battle cry of the Mexican War of Independence from Spain. On September 16, 1810, parish priests Miguel Hidalgo y Costilla rang the church bell and gave an impassioned speech to the people to take up arms against the Spanish crown and the Spanish colonial government. That event marked the start of the Mexican War of Independence, and Hidalgo's Grito became its battle cry. Mexico won its victory over Spain on September 28, 1821, and Hidalgo is now known as the father of Mexico's independence. Every year on September 15th, from the balcony of the National Palace in Mexico City, the president rings the same bell Hidalgo used back in 1810 and shouts his version of the grito. Viva Mexico, viva la independencia, vivan los héroes. Fall is underway, and while the temperatures are starting to drop a little for many in the U.S., it doesn't mean we can let our guards down when it comes to ticks. With more, here is ABC's Aika Jachi. Ticks live in the same places you might be spending time outside this fall, like your backyard, the woods, or fields. It's important to check your clothes and pets for ticks after being outside. If you find a tick on your body, the CDC recommends grasping the tick with clean tweezers as close to your skin as possible and steadily pulling away to remove the tick. Clean your hands and the bite area with soap and water after. To safely get rid of the tick, either put it in alcohol, a sealed container or bag, or flush the tick down the toilet. Tell your doctor if you have a fever or rash after a tick bite. Don't let ticks ruin your fun this fall. With this Medical Minute, I'm Ika Jachi. For those of you, all of us, probably, the fall season is less about pumpkin spice and more about mold and ragweed. However, if you have the sniffles, it's very easy to confuse your symptoms for just cold. Dr. Sandra Hong, she's an allergist at the Cleveland Clinic, says if you have allergies, you might notice you have a stuffy or runny nose, itchy, watery eyes, and sneezing. Also take note of when your symptoms start and they end. Colds last a couple of weeks. Allergies last all season long. Ugh. But there are ways to reduce your symptoms and your little cute pet can be part of that solution. If you are sleeping with them, you are basically sleeping with some weeds that are outdoors. So I usually ask my patients to keep the pets out of their bedroom, especially during their really big times of the year. And when you're cleaning up after them, use a HEPA vacuum. Otherwise, you're spewing it back into the air. Hong says there are three ways to ease your allergies, including over-the-counter treatments like nasal spray and antihistamines. An allergy shop will help. And Hong says you can avoid what triggers allergies. But if you want to get those flu shots, I mean those uh, allergy shots, you have to start like weeks or months yeah. early. Correct. So you got to think about that. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's fitting we're talking about the allergies because I got the pollen count for you today. There you go. Guess what's in there? Molds <laughs> and ragweed. <laughs> Molds are high. Ragweed is moderate. It's actually up from yesterday. Pigweed and grass are present, but in low amounts. The aquifer is down a foot over the past 24 hours or nearly a foot over the past 24 hours. And as we look ahead to tomorrow, a lot of people are going to like those morning low temperatures. Yeah, it's warm out there right now but at least it'll feel like fall in the mornings. I've got a look ahead coming up.
You talk about all those allergies. I guess I'll give up the allergies for the cooler temperatures. Is that a trade-off? Well, it, it, last week we had the allergies with the raunchy weather. So. <laughs> I guess well, then, hey, okay, move it in the right let's direction. Let's focus on the positive. Yes. Yeah, it does feel good outside. But I do have to put some perspective uh, into this forecast and talk about how dry it has yeah. been. In fact, this is the driest year to date on record for us. We have just seen a little over eight inches of rain so far this year. By now, we should have have more than 24 inches of rain, more than two feet of rainfall. So it has been very dry. And really, honestly, the airport has missed out a lot more than other locations around San Antonio, like the Hill Country and to the south. But still, there's some pretty significant years on here when you look at this. 1954, long drought then. 2011, long drought then. We're still about an inch short of the rainfall that we saw this time back in 2011. So we could really use some rain, but with the dry air firmly in place. Look at these rain chances. Nothing over the next several days for us. And this morning, though, it did feel really nice outside. This is a look at this morning's lows. We got down to 61 degrees in San Antonio, down to 49 in Kerrville, down to 58 in Hondo, 58 in New Braunfels, and 64 in Pleasanton. A very nice morning, all because of this dry air that's in place. Dew points are in the 30s and 40s, very low humidity. And as those winds continue from the east northeast, East, we're going to keep on seeing low humidity, low dew points over the coming days. Really, we don't see humidity get above 50 degrees. Dew points get above 50 degrees until early next week. So we are in it for the long haul with the dry, comfortable weather. So early tomorrow morning, if you get up close to sunrise, 726 in the morning, this is what it's going to feel like out there. It'll be in the 40s in the Hill Country. It'll be 59 in Del Rio, 57 in Hondo, in the 50s here in San Antonio tomorrow in the upper 50s, 56 in New Braunfels. As we get a little bit closer, you can see neighborhood morning lows tomorrow. 49 in Bernie, 50 in Bulverde, 55 in Holotus, 56 in New Braunfels, 50 in Canyon Lake, 57 in Seguin. It'll be 59 in Floresville and 59 in Pleasanton. But much like today, tomorrow we're going to warm up quickly after sunrise. We started off at 61, it's already 84. So we're already nearly 25 degrees above where we started this morning, all because of that drier air in place. Uh, but at least it feels great, especially in the shade out there with that lower humidity and that breeze from the northeast at about 15 miles per hour. It's 79 this afternoon in Del Rio and 77 in Rock Springs, still in the 70s out to the west. Really Really nice out there. 88 in Pleasanton and 86 in New Braunfels. But as we head into the afternoon, our high temperature is going to be 91 around San Antonio. So it's going to be a warm one this afternoon, warmer than seasonably average. We've got dry air moving in place, preventing much rainfall from this ridge of high pressure overhead. Meanwhile, again, Hurricane Ian, a Category 3 hurricane, has just emerged into the Gulf and it will strengthen over the coming hours into tomorrow. Right now it's got winds sustained at 115 miles per hour, but it will likely become a category four hurricane with winds potentially up to 130 miles per hour before making landfall between Tampa and Fort Myers as a major hurricane. As it moves on land, it'll weaken as far as the winds go, but we're still going to be seeing major impacts from even rainfall, 10 to 15 inches of rain across the state of Florida. They're getting way too much rain while we have no rain in our forecast over the next several days. At least those mornings are going to be very comfortable and fall like out there. So again, the silver lining is the humidity is gone and at least feel like fall in the mornings. Deliver great news. Thank you, Sarah. San Antonio is a very rich city in, in, our, in our culture and in our history, and this is how we are going to protect it. A local organization working to raise awareness about Hispanic culture and traditions and you can be a part of this effort. We'll show you how. All right, yesterday we didn't get any of the leftovers from all that. Was yesterday donut day? Yeah, they had donuts. They didn't yeah, get any in. didn't get one. All right. Yeah. We've got something even better today. And donuts? Not gonna bring <laughs> <No>. us. <laughs> how about this? 
<laughs> belly dancing. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. And there is a belly dancing conference coming up here in town. Oh, am, I supposed, am I supposed to start? <laughs> oh, you can do no. hips, you can do rib, everything like that. She's Wait till you see the hip move. They can move. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell you all about that coming up. <laughs> all right, well, Maria Jose Curry, owner of Del Alma Imports, joins us. And you have the most beautiful handmade textiles and art from authentic Mexican artisans and Day of the Dead coming up, right? Yes, now's the time to start getting ready for Day of the Dead. So we have the calaveras, we have some calavera earrings. And of course, today is actually when Mexico's independence happens. It's an extra special festive day. We will explain all of that. And you got, she's got a special just for that as well. Speaking of special, no notice, but how about a great steak? And Chef Ahmed Pande from Antler's Restaurant, Hill Country Hyatt. What is the secret to cooking the perfect steak? As you see, the pan is smoking, so make sure you have a hot pan, okay. sizzling pan, and your meat. Make sure you pat it down, take the moisture out, put salt and pepper, classic, simple, and just put it on the pan. It's important to take that moisture out. Yes, we'll it's very more. important. All right, <laughs> Texas trippin'. We're going to be heading to the Hill Country, perfect for this fall weather out there. Pick out some of those uh, gourds and everything. That and a whole lot more coming up on SA Live. Our history, our roots, our family is what the 42nd Annual Texas Hispanic Genealogical and Historical Conference is all about. We have some excellent speakers lined up that will be teaching us and speaking about not only DNA, but even some local speakers like uh, the Bear County Archives or our, our own San Antonio Public Library and the resources available to get started even there. Barbara Travis is the president of Los Becareños Genealogical and Historical Society. The organization is helping host the conference that will educate about how to research and discover your family history, as well as a look at the history of Texas. Here in San Antonio, Los Becareños are a great resource for anyone looking to trace back their family history, and they hope their work and the conference brings awareness of our Hispanic culture and traditions. San Antonio is a very rich city in, in, our, in our culture and in our history, and this is how we are going to protect it so that it goes on to the next generation and the following generations. You still have time to register for this conference. Just head to losbejareños.org, and it will take place this Friday and Saturday. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Well, it has been a while since we've been able to put the 50s on the seven day, but it looks like we're going to be seeing 50s at least in the morning hours. But just because it's cool in the morning doesn't mean it's going to be cool all day long. In typical South Central Texas fashion in the fall, it's going to get warm in the afternoons. High temperatures near 90 degrees for the foreseeable future. David Ursula. 30 degrees difference morning. I know. That's nice. impressive. Okay. <laughs> All right, I, I, whew, I'm just going to throw this to SA Light. It's Mike and it, some belly dancers. So. Okay, Mike, I'm just going to say, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> Have fun, Mike. SA Light starts right now. <laughs> Got to be good. Have a little faith in me, Ursula. <laughs> Today on SA Live, we take a trip to a Hill Country Garden Center that has pumpkins, fall treats, wine, a boutique, and a whole lot more. Plus, Hispanic Heritage Month continues, and we check out handmade goods from Mexican artisans and share how you can support them locally. And we learn about a first of its kind of event right here in SA, and we get a brief lesson from international award-winning award -winning belly dancers. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square, this is SA Live. Oh, oh, hello and happy Tuesday. Yes, it is. Just park that perfect steak right over here. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike Osterhage. <laughs> and I'm Fiona Gorostiza. Well, our first guest today is the new chef de cuisine for Antler's Lodge Restaurant at Hyatt Regency Hill Country Resort. Yep, Chef Ahmed Pande joins us with tips on how to grill the perfect steak. And going back to what we were talking about in mm -hmm. 1250, you said Keep pat dry pepper, a little bit of salt, salt on here, hint of oil in a very hot pan, right? Ooh, that yes, is hot it is pan. hot. And then pop this baby in there, salt side down, right? Yes. And then season the top of it? There you go, and then season the top. Okay. So that pan is at about what? How many degrees? It's, uh, it should be around 400 degrees right now. Which is and about... And that's the perfect way 
on your on okay. your stove about what? High, uh, medium high. Yeah, medium high. Okay. And then uh, we can uh, just turn the temperature down a little bit. Okay. All right, turn it down just there a little you bit. Go. There we go. And then uh, let it sear for a minute. And that's the thing, because people want to go in here right now and go, eh, start moving it. Leave, Leave it. it right? Leave it. Yeah. Okay. Let it get crispy. For a and minute. Yes, just for don't a minute. touch it for you 60 want, seconds. Yes, you want that bark. And once you get that nice rim around it and the fat comes out, that will give it, uh, give the steak more flavor. Because a lot of people, and this is a, a New York strip, right? Uh -huh. And that edge of fat right there, somebody might go, no, 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 let's trim that off, but oh, leave that alone, right? Yes, leave that alone. That actually gives flavor. So you'll see right now, now you're going to put the pan and then it's time to flip it right time now. To flip it, okay. Yes. So. Let's flip it. There you go. Look Ooh. at that. There you go. Now we have to do a little bit to it, right? Yes. Yeah. So let's let it sit and we'll add the butter in a bit. Okay, because you never want to add the butter first. Right? Yeah, no, you don't want to burn the butter and you don't want to mess your steak up. So. Okay. Okay, out there at Antler's Restaurant, you can obviously get one of these wonderful steaks, but then uh, what would you say your specialty is? Like at Antler's? Mm -hmm. Like I'm from Indian origin, like uh, I was born in India, so a while growing up, uh, my specialty, like learning Indian food, learning from my mom, working with her in the kitchen, even though she didn't want me in the kitchen, <laughs> you know, so, but I would just still find a reason to help her and uh, just learn Indian cuisine. So that actually is my specialty, okay. but I've also a specialty in French cuisine and uh, I've learned a lot of dishes, worked with a lot of chefs uh, from France when I lived over there and then they trained me a lot. Okay, to do and that. now of course you're here. All okay, right, now what's next? You do the the, so now uh, it's time for you to add the butter. Let's turn okay. the heat back on. Back okay. on, okay. Uh, My sous chef, yes. Fiona. You need to click it. Oh, click it. Click it. There, there you go. There we go, okay. How much butter? Like a Heat's back on. Just be generous with butter. Be generous. Put, it's, yeah. butter. it's butter. You it's go. just butter. It's always yeah. good. All right. Oh, there we go. Ooh. And then let's add yeah. the thyme and the garlic. Thyme. How much time? How much time do we have? Hey. <laughs> it's okay. hey. It's okay. As much as time you have. Oh, oh. And there this just is going to add all that nice little flavor in here. And uh -huh. how many cloves of garlic? Uh, just two or one. It's okay. fine. Okay. And this there goes you. in there and you get all that flavor. And then you want to just take this and start basting it? Yes. Okay. And get all those good flavors All those in flavor. There. And you can put the thyme on top of the steak. Mm -hmm. And when you baste it, the flavor will go through the thyme into the steak. Okay. Oh my gosh. This smells right? so good <laughs> right now. And that's, that's the thing, is that right there, that's basically a great sauce, right? Yes, mm -hmm. it is a great sauce. Sometimes you don't even need a sauce for that if With you just that. baste it. Yeah. Okay. Now, some of the other dishes that we have lined up here in front, starting over here on this side. Oh, that's my favorite, again. Uh, we have barbecue octopus. So what we do is, like, uh, uh, we use barbecue seasoning and we have sous vide. We cook it in the sous vide for, like, five to six hours because mm -hmm. octopus always takes a long time to cook and uh, we grill it on uh, our grill and then we just cut it and just put it, plate it and then we have pepper coulis as well. Okay, and this? This one, oh, so this is elk and this is what we try to provide in our restaurant is to give different variety of uh, meats and uh, try to get game meat actually. So we focus more on game meats. Now, oh, somebody okay. who's never had elk, elk. before, uh -huh. what would you compare it to? Uh, I would say a cross between a fillet and venison. Okay. Yes. Okay. Kind of the gaminess of venison. Yes, game is venison, but like the texture would be like a fillet. Okay. All right. So, so this would that. have to go into the oven, right? Mm -hmm. But through uh -huh. the magic of television, okay, so there we are your tongs. We're going to you. plate this up. Okay. Oh, that smells so, so what am I good. doing first? So. Let's do the potato. Okay. How much potato? About. Just be generous, okay. right? Okay. I'm, I'm a hungry guy, oh, so okay. I can eat a there lot. There we go. There you All go. right. And then you just swipe it down. Ooh. There you okay. go. Okay. Uh huh. And then you wanna put your veggies. Veggies. Let's Ooh, move wait. it somewhere. There you go. Here we go. So and then the veggies, veggies you wanna put it that way, or you can go cross. Okay. That oh. elk is so tender, so delicious. That. Mmm. It is right. That's very okay. good. Mm. We and then it's also seasoned with our uh, chili coffee rub, mm -hmm. so it just uh, gives you an extra that flavor, you know. All right, this steak has to go in the oven a little bit after doing this. Yes. Or? 
Okay. Unless you want it really, really medium rare, it'd be very good. So. Yeah. Okay. So if you if you keep it on a low temp right now, mm -hmm. it will be ready in like around three minutes. Oh, very good. Just time for the commercial break. So guess what I'm having for lunch. So if you would like more information about Antlers Restaurant over there at the um, Hill Country. Hi, in Regency, head over to SALive.com, click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, and we have provided a link or just scan that QR code right there at the corner of your screen. Chef, Ahmed, thank you very much, sir. Thank All right, you. well, fall sports, of course, are happening, you know, but which games are you watching? Do you like to watch football, baseball, and baseball? And baseball? The playoffs are coming up. Yeah. College football. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. all the pomp and circumstance and <laughs> man and all that stuff. Yes. Love a great games this weekend, too. So, so let us know, um, are you watching football or baseball this fall, or maybe both? Tag us at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, and we'll see some of your answers a little later in the show. What team do you root for in baseball? Uh, I'm not going to say. Okay. <laughs> anyway, welcome. <laughs> TV sports and fall menus to a uh, weekend family road trip that includes scenic drive, pumpkins, even a little bit of wine. We're taking you to one hidden gem today. Our gentle Tobias Trusky has this weekend's Texas trippin' in the Texas Hill Country. Take a look. A fall outing to the Texas Hill Country. Today we take you to Wild Seed Farms. Now we've been out here during the summer, but in the fall, you can find some adorable pumpkins, fall decorations, and lots more. Let's go explore. It's a beautiful scenic drive to Fredericksburg, known as Texas Wine Country. Wild Seed Farms is one stop that the entire family can enjoy. This time of the year, they have a variety of pumpkins to choose from, along with all your fall flower favorites. And no matter what kind of pumpkin you're looking for, they're sure to have it here. I like this one. I don't know about this guy. Maybe. He needs love. Being one of the largest garden centers in the Texas Hill Country, you'll find more than just pumpkins here. Inside the Brew Bonnet Beer Garden, I came across some fall-inspired jams, butters, and sauces. And then, of course, more pumpkins. After you get your pumpkins, they have a wine tasting room. This is the newest addition to Wild Seed Farms. I'm gonna go check it out. This tasting room still smells freshly built. Yes, you can enjoy your wine, take a little break from pumpkin shopping in this gorgeous setting. And if you're in the mood for shopping inside Blossom's Boutique, you'll find Texas-inspired gifts, fall decorations, and more. This is definitely a trip you can take in the Texas hills on the scenic drive, enjoy photo shoots near the pumpkin patch, have a glass of wine, and do some boutique shopping. All in one stop, Wild Seed Farms. For SA Live, I'm Jen Tobias Trusky. All right, well, so cool. did, right? And did you know that they are the largest working wildflower farm? They have something good growing there all year long. Oh, but you're right. I did not know that. And for more information, of course, on Wild Seed Farms, just go to SALive.com, click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just scan that QR code right there on your screen. And this is the perfect weather to drive to the hill country. Love it. <laughs> We're getting a taste of Jamaican cuisine, and they're getting ready for football season. We'll tell you what's on the menu. I might have a little kick. And it's Hispanic Heritage Month, and we're highlighting a local business that's supporting Mexican culture and its artists. That's next on SA Live. 